What's going on friends? Welcome back to Calheim Set Review Part 5. Today we are looking at the black cards that have been spoiled for MTG's new set, Kaldheim. Um, we are now T-5 days until the release of Kaldheim physically, and I do believe it's going live tomorrow? I think tomorrow or within two days on MTG Arena, so not too much longer till we'll be able to play with the new cards. Um, so if you're starting here at this part of the review series for some reason, the way that I am evaluating it with these cards is I'm using a format of new staple, constructed playable, limited playable, and pack filler cards. New staple cards are cards that I feel like represent the color very well and they're going to see play in lots of decks that are utilizing that color. Constructed playable cards are cards that are good in pre-constructed formats like Commander, Modern, Standard, any format where you're playing with a pre-made deck. If a card is playable and limited, that means it's going to be good in the drafting formats. Card, um, those are the formats where you're not playing with the pre-constructed deck, where you're opening fresh packs and you're playing with just the cards that you opened. And the remaining cards are cards that are so bad or so undervalued that they're considered pack filler, basically meaning they have almost no redeemable quality. So with that out of the way, let's get started looking at the black cards. First card we're looking at today is called Way Down. It is one black for sorcery. It says, as an additional cost to cast this spell, exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do this, target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. I feel like this card is very good. I feel like this is a sorcery speed lightning bolt in a lot of times, which is actually, it's it's even a little bit better if you're using it against creatures. Granted, you can't target anything, so you can't target, you know, your opponent with this card. But minus three, minus three is typically better than dealing three damage. And I feel like the fact that you, all you have to do to get this card to go off is exile a creature from your graveyard seems fairly inconsequential. There's always creatures and various things sitting around a graveyard not being utilized. So, constructed playable card. Um, do not be fooled by this card. I think it's a lot better than it looks. Next card is Wither Crown, one and a black for an enchantment aura. It says enchant a creature. Enchanted creature has base power zero, and it has, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life unless you sacrifice this creature. So essentially what you do, you play this on your opponent's very, very large card, let's say like a 7-7 seven, seven, for example, it becomes a 0-7, um, effectively making them unable to attack with it unless they do something to get rid of this enchantment, do something to buff its power up still so it's able to, to attack again um, and they're going to take one damage every single time or every single upkeep that that creature continues to sit on the board um big downside for this card is they can still block with it they can still tap it to utilize activated abilities mana abilities and anything like that um so this is um this is similar to like a pacify but in black i don't think it's as good as pacify because the your opponent can still get a lot of value out of that creature being on the board. Um, but I think a hilarious board state would be like your opponent has four creatures on the board and you put four Wither Crowns on them, so they're just taking four damage every upkeep and they can't really do anything with those creatures on the board. Um, I, <laughs> there's probably no world where that happens in Constructed. I think this is an okay card in Limited because, like I said, the, it, it's, it's pseudo removal and removal, so premium and Limited. So you hit their opponent's big card with this and they start taking that one damage every upkeep. Seems okay in Limited. Next card is Village Rights. Um, this is a reprint. It's one black mana for an instant that says, and it's as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. If you sacrifice a creature, you get to draw two cards. Um, so this is a card that sees a lot of play in aristocrat style decks, any sort of deck where you are sacrificing your own creatures to gain any sort of um, four state advantage, put things in your graveyard, dealing damage, drawing cards, gaining mana, anything like that. So this is a card that already sees a good amount of play, and I think it's already in standard. Um, or maybe it recently rotated out. I don't know. This card's pretty much always in the standard and always sees some amount of play in certain decks. Next card is Dread Rider. It's five and a black for a Spirit Knight creature. That is a 3-7. It has a mana ability that says you pay one and a black and tap it. Exile a creature from your graveyard. Target opponent loses three life. Um, so a six mana 3-7 with no keywords is definitely not good enough to see constructive play. It does have that mana ability, which I think is probably good and limited. It has a good sized body. It's gonna be hard for your opponents to deal with. They can block. And if you're using it defensively and you're losing creatures, you can start ticking away at your opponent's life total, um, inevitably whittling them down to zero. So this is pretty good in the mid to late game where you have those creatures sitting in the graveyard. And like I said, it helps give you that inevitability of pushing to win the game without having to attack. So in limited, good, constructed, way too slow. 
Next card is Skull Raid. Skull Raid, Skull Raid costs three and a black for a sorcery. It says, target opponent discards two cards. If fewer than two cards were discarded this way, you draw cards equal to the difference. It also has Foretell. If you don't know what Foretell does, you can pay two mana at sorcery speed on your turn to exile this card face down, and then you can play it on a later turn for its Foretell cost. This one's Foretell cost is one in the black. Um, so if you Foretell it, you're effectively not saving any mana. You're still paying four mana in total, unless you have some way to manipulate the, the Foretelling cost originally. Um, so what does this card looks like? It's a, it's a weird blend between um, hand disruption and also card draw. Uh, which I think makes it a little bit worse because it's not it's it's a utility card because it's not just hand destruction and it's not just card draw so it's it's costed more to kind of to compensate for that so oh, I, I I don't think this card is good enough for constructed um, because there there are more effective ways to get rid of two cards out of your opponent's hand you can do that for two or three mana a lot of time there's better ways to draw two cards you can do that for two or three mana a lot of times um, so again you're paying a little more for the flexibility which I think makes it worse. I think in limited it's okay if you can use it to hit two cards it's pretty good if you can use it to draw two cards it's pretty good and if you can use it to do any combination of the two it's still pretty decent next card is raise the draugr one in a black for an instant that says choose one return target creature from your graveyard to your hand or you can return two target creatures that share a creature type from your graveyard to your hand so i, I think this deck this card doesn't really fit into any constructed decks because there's better ways to get things out of your graveyard right now in pretty much every single format um especially if you're paying two mana to get one card back from your graveyard that seems a little bit expensive you can usually get a lot more cards um you could say maybe you play this in a tribal deck and you can get two creatures back i, I think that's too specific um any amount of card advantage though in limited is going to be pretty cool um, it's pretty helpful. You get two, If you can get two creatures in there that share a creature type, you pay this and you get them back from the graveyard, you're pretty happy about that. That gives you significant card advantage in limited. I just think this card is way too slow, um, and I can't think of a deck that, that would want to utilize this in any constructed format. Next card is Priest of the Haunted Edge, which is one in a black for a snow creature, a zombie cleric, that's a 0-4. It has a tap effect that says you can sacrifice Priest of the Haunted Edge target creature will get minus x minus x until the end of turn x is equal to the number of snow lands you control activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery so um this is an interesting snow card is the first one that we're looking at in black i find this one interesting because a lot of the other snow cards um those x abilities counted all the snow permanents that you have and for whatever reason this one specifically says snow lands um with that being said if you can if you can craft a deck that has really only snow lands, maybe like a mono black snow theme deck if something like that exists. I think this effect looks really good um, because you're already putting the snow lands in there so you don't have to do anything extra to get this ability to go off. Plus it's on a very nice zero four body. Um, so you can use this to, as a blocker against aggressive decks. Um, and when you get towards the late game, you might be able to tap and sacrifice it to hit like the enemy's big late game threat. So if, this, if the snow deck exists with um, any color combination, including black, I think it's playable. Next card is Coma's Faithful. Two and a black for a creature, elf cleric, that's a 3-1 with life link, life link, and it says when Coma's Faithful dies, each player mills three cards. Um, so I don't think this card is very good and constructed because I, I don't think it's focused. It seems to care about two different things. It cares about gaining life, but also cares about milling cards. I feel if it was like just just worded with abilities that would complement each other it would be a lot better there's just not a lot, a lot of synergy with milling cards and also gaining life that i'm aware of um however a three one um with lifelink for three in limited is not that bad next card is carfell kennel master four and a black for a creature that's a zombie berserker who is a four four it says when Carfell Kennel Master enters the battlefield, up to two target creatures each get plus one plus zero and gain indestructible until end of turn. So anytime you can give creatures indestructible, that's a very, very powerful effect. I think the issue is that this is on a creature, so a lot of times when you're going to be giving other things indestructible, it's going to be on your turn. And the way you utilize the indestructibility is when you're attacking, because this is a very slow card. I think because of how slow it is, it's really, really powerful and limited. If you can hit two decent sized cards with this when it comes into play, give them both indestructible, you can swing for a huge attack that your opponent can do very little to defend. Um, again, way too slow for constructed in a limited format. I think this card's like an all-star, very good. Next is Jarl of the Forsaken. Three and a black for a zombie cleric creature, that's a three two. 
So the Jarl has Flash, and it also says when Jarl the Forsaken enters the battlefield, destroy a target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. You can also foretell this card for two, and you can play it later for one in the black. And because it has Flash, you can you can play it on your opponent's turn also. Um, so what does this mean? There is a card that was printed several sets ago that's almost identical to this card with Flash, and it was four mana. You flash it in, and it would destroy anything that got that was dealt damage that turn. Um, I don't remember the name of the card because it never saw playing constructed. Um, therefore, I also think this card will not see any playing constructed. However, in limited, and I wish I remember the name of that card, but that card was awesome in limited because sometimes you could like block with a one one against a big creature and then you could slam that down. It was like pseudo removal, and it, we know anything and any pretty much anything that's removal and limited is really good. And that one you would get an extra body, same as this card. So if you can ever set up that board state, it's going to be really good. That's a huge tempo swing. Next card is Infernal Pet, two and a black for an imp creature, two, two. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Infernal Pet, and it gains flying until end of turn. I don't like this card. Um, it's a three mana, two, two, and that's about it. <laughs> like, even if, even if you manage to get that trigger, so, so you can't utilize that trigger the first turn you play, which is when I think it would be best, you'd play this on like turn four and then a one, one, and then you would, you would get that trigger. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't keep the counter. It only gets that counter for that turn. And same with the flying, it loses it, and it's going to go back to back to a two-two after that, um, because of the, at least because of the way it's worded. There's no punctuation between the plus one plus one counter and the part where it gets flying. So the way I'm reading it is, it only gets those additional benefits until the end of that turn. So this card is super insanely slow, way too slow for constructed. Um, you know, even if you, even if you can trigger this consistently, you're still only getting a three three, and it's only a three three when it attacks because until the end of your turn, unless you're somehow playing so many instant speed spells on your opponent's turn, even then you're only giving it plus one plus one. So I I just don't think this card's very good. Next card is the Grim Draugr, two and a black for a snow creature, a zombie berserker who's a three two. This one has a mana ability that says one and a snow mana. Grim Draugr gets plus one plus zero and gains menace until end of turn. So what do we think about this card? Um, I don't think it's good. I think you know it. It at least has it at least has the benefit that you could use the mana the mana ability multiple times per turn if you're in a late game, maybe like limited. Um, I think it it just doesn't do it enough. Um, it doesn't do enough. Menace is nice, but menace, menace is not one of the most powerful keywords that you can get in Magic. Um, giving it plus one attack is really inconsequential. So you have to wait a turn, and after you wait a turn, this guy is effectively a five mana, four two with Menace. I don't think he, that you would play that by itself. Therefore, I think this card is too slow, and I think it's pack filler card. Next card is Feed the Serpent. You're paying two and two black for an instant. This is Exile Target Creature Planeswalker. Um, so this is nice removal in limited format. Um, obviously, it's not statted. It's not statted well enough, or it's not it's not costed mana wise well enough to ever see play in constructed. Most of your mana, most most of your CMC's mana costs for removal and constructed are going to be three or less. So this one's a little bit too expensive. But this card's really really good in limited because like I'm like a broken record now, but removal's premium. And this is really good removal because it's not just destroy, it's exile, target, creature, or planeswalker. So it gets around anything, the indestructibility, which we've seen a lot in this set, um, especially. So, or any sort of exiting the battlefield effects aren't going to trigger. So this is great and limited, too slow and um, constructed. Next card, Dusk Wielder. He's one black for an elf berserker creature who's a 1-2. He has boast. This is the first black card we've seen with boast. So what we know about boast is you can only trigger the boasting ability when the creature is attacking. And if you do, you pay the mana and you get some effect. So you can only do it once per turn. And Dusk Wielder says you pay one to boast him. If you do that, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Um, this card sucks. Like it's, it's exceptionally bad. Like a lot of the boast cards are very bad. Um, one of the huge recurring issues that I have with the boasting theme is you have to attack in order to utilize the boast. And oftentimes, the, because of the way that the creatures are statted, like this is a 1-2, that for, you have to attack to get the boast. But it's only a 1-2, so in a lot of board states, you're not going to want to attack with it because your opponent's going to have a bigger creature that's just going to block into it. And this has such an inconsequential effect. Your opponent loses life and you gain a life. And you lose this creature when you attack. You're never going to be able to attack into anything. So this card's very bad. 
Next card is Elder Fang Disciple. One in a black for an elf cleric creature. That is a 1-1. It says when Elder, when Elder Fang Disciple enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. This card exists in so many other forms already, then they all see play, so I think this one will probably see play too. This is pretty much the same thing as I think it's called like Burglar Rats or whatever, which is also a 2 mana 1 1 that makes everyone exile a card. Um, cards like this will always see play, especially in multiplayer formats, that you want to make your opponents discard their cards. Because it's a global effect. This says each opponent. It would get worse if you just had to pick an opponent, but you know, playing this out for 2 mana 1 1, this is carded, this is pseudo card advantage too. Because you're playing a relatively weak card and hopefully hopefully you're going to hit bigger cards out of your opponent's hand um so this card's good and it goes into discard decks for sure next card is draugr recruiter um three and a black for a zombie cleric creature that's a three three and this one also has boast so you can boast this one for three and a black so four mana to return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand this card is so bad this might be one of the worst cards that we've seen in the set like i know divine gamut's the meme and everyone thinks that's the worst card that's ever like ever been printed uh, this card is so horrible so this is a four mana three three with a small body that forces you to attack and pay four mana only when you attack to only return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand like you could play a four mana spell that just returns a creature card from your graveyard to your battlefield and not have to jump through all these hoops of having to play this stupid three three then attacking then paying four to boast it this makes you pay eight mana for a three three and return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand this card is so bad moving on next card is dogged pursuit three and a black for an enchantment that says at the beginning of your end step each opponent loses a life and you gain a life again i think this is another card that's really bad um you can make the argument that maybe this is good in a multiplayer format it's not even good in that format i don't think because your issue is you're only making your opponents lose one life and in multiplayer formats especially commander they already have 40 life and this only triggers during your end step it doesn't trigger during every end step if it triggered during every end step i think it would be a lot better um, I think if it made all of your opponents lose a life and you gain a life for each opponent that lost a life, it would get a lot better. But everyone loses one and you only get one. This card is so slow and it really does nothing. It's like four mana, huge tempo loss. And it doesn't really add, add you that much inevitability of ending the game because it's effectively going to take you 40 turns to end the game with this card. No, no game goes 40 turns, so this card's bad. Um, demonic gifts is a one in a black for an instant that says until end of turn target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains when this creature dies return it to the battlefield under its owner's control so that's not a bad effect and i think it's good and limited i think this card is really really slow and constructed probably not going to see play in that format um this card already exists at a cheaper mana point and like kaya's ghost form does the exact same thing and that's only one mana um granted i think kaya's ghost form is sorcery speed and this one's instant uh, I, t I just like maybe, maybe you're really happy if you're playing it in some sort of budget deck where you want to protect stuff because to an extent this kind of gives a creature like I don't know in indestructible in a way because it gets it just gets destroyed but you put it right back on the battlefield um, so it's kind of like protecting it from from removal once um, if it ha if you somehow put this on an ETB creature it, re it gets removed and comes back into the battlefield and you trigger the ETB again and that's like significant value um, which you can probably set up more in limited. I just don't think I don't see that consistently happening in constructed I think it's a little bit better than pack filler though Plus it gives plus two plus zero. Maybe you get a trade with it and then it comes back. That would be sweet, too Next card is death knell berserker one in black for elf berserker creature. This one's a two two It says when death knell berserker dies if its power was three or greater create a two two black zombie berserker creature token um, so I don't think it's hard to get this card to three power. There's a lot of ways to get it to three power, especially if you're playing this in an elf deck. Um, there's so many elves that give all your elves plus one, plus one, or any amount, any amount of power boosts. Um, there's a lot of artifacts that sit around and give plus one, plus one. You could pot potentially equip it with something to get it over three. I think that's probably the slowest way to do it. Um, I think if you can consistently get something on the like some sort of global effect that gives everything plus one plus one that'll get this up to three power every the, every time this is huge value because you're paying two mana for a four four and especially if that's in an aggressive like elf deck that's very strong um one downside to this card is the token that it makes is not an elf it's a zombie berserker instead of another elf berserker um but that's still a lot of value and you can probably still get some synergy off of it as well so I think this can see play in some very aggressive black decks. 
Next card is Vengeful Reaper. Three and a black for an angel cleric creature. This one is a 2-3 with many keywords. Flying, death touch, and haste. And it has foretell. You can pay the two and you can foretell it later for one and a black more. Um, this card's good and limited. I think it's not... I don't think it's very good and constructed. I think it's too slow paying four mana for a 2-3 that have, doesn't have any effect when it comes into the battlefield. Um, other than just giving it haste, but maybe you can do two damage with it. Nah, I don't really think that's good enough. In limited, though, this card is an all-star. Um, it has the evasion of flying in its haste, so you can get in for two damage right away. You can keep it back as a blocker with death touch, which is awesome, so it, it'll counter or at least challenge any other big threats that your opponent are playing that are just like stat sticks, you know, six sixes or whatever. Um, so I, I think this is good in both attacking and defending and limited, but too slow and constructed. The next card is Turgrid's Shadow, three and two black for an instant. It says each player sacrifices two creatures. Um, you can foretell this one also. I think there's these foretell mechanics are so weird because this is one of the ones where you foretell it for two and then you actually end up paying more mana um, in total if you end up foretelling it because you have to foretell it for two and then you have to play pay two and two black later so you're paying six mana in total after jumping through those hoops whereas you can just cast it outright for five um i mean regardless i think whether you're casting it outright or casting it for the foretell it's way too slow in the um in the constructive formats this card is okay as a catch-up card in limited so if you find yourself going second or you find yourself really behind on the board state and you can play this in a scenario where like you maybe don't have any creatures and the opponent has two that's a huge turnaround in tempo um so you, you don't want to bank on always being behind because i you know i don't think that's a good game plan but if you ever find yourself in this situation this card happens to be in your hand you'll you'll have a huge tempo swing by playing this next card is skimfar shadow sage three and a black for an elf cleric creature that is a two five so this card has a couple abilities and you have to pick one you can pick its first ability which is each opponent loses x life where X is the greatest number of creatures you control that have a creature type in common. Or you can do the same thing, but you gain X life instead of dealing X, um, instead of opponents losing X life. So when I first looked at this card, I thought it was really unimpressive. And I felt there was a, there was a red card that did something very similar to this, and I felt the same way when I looked at this, and then I thought about it a little more, and I realized this card is disgustingly broken. Um, this is in some formats <laughs> four mana in the game because you play this in your um you're gonna play this in whatever tribal deck that you have probably elves because this card is an elf itself and will count itself towards the x and its abilities so what you do is you set up a board state where you have 20 elves which really isn't that hard to do if you're playing elf tribal so you have 20 elves you play this card and then you do 20 to your opponent and they lose the game so there's probably a way to set that up as an otk pretty reliably as well um and it's probably even better in multiplayer formats because you can get even wider board states than that um I, I don't see anyone utilizing the second half where you're gaining life very frequently but this will just blow out an opponent so many times um anyway so that was a long-winded way of me saying that this card is definitely constructed playable it is a huge combo piece and a really easy way and a really quick and inevitable way to close out games next card is rune of mortality one in a black for an enchantment aura rune so we're looking at black's iteration of the aura runes so as we know all runes when they come into the battlefield they'll draw you a card so it's a two mana cycle by itself um, if you enchant a creature it's going to get death touch if you enchant equipment and then you attach the equipment to the creature the equipment has death touch and therefore the creature will also have death touch um, so I, this is one of the better ones as far as i'm concerned death touch is a really powerful ability um, so drawing a card and giving a creature death touch is really pretty good um, it's 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 kind of slow still but in limited formats there have been cards in the past where you pay two mana or one mana to give a creature death touch and maybe like scry card um so this is a drawing you card which i think makes it a little better i think it just has the issue of it's it's slower than playing it at instant speed which doesn't make it as good for a combat trick um but if you could put it on an equipment somehow and you can sit there and give different creatures that you have death touch that could make it even better it's uh, like all the other runes it's way too slow for constructed but this is one of the better ones for limited Next card, Return Upon the Tide, four and a black for a sorcery. That says, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. If it's an elf, create two one one green elf warrior creature tokens. You can foretell this one, you pay the two, and then you pay three and a black later. Um, 
So again, this one is going to cost you more mana for whatever reason if you foretell it, and this one's not even at instant speed. So you have to pay two, and then you have to wait till the following turn to pay four to do the same effect. Um, I don't think this card is good. Uh, I don't even think it's good in an elf deck uh, where you get those additional one ones because there's just so way there's so many cheaper and more effective ways to reanimate things out of the graveyard and get them back onto the battlefield. Um, especially if you're paying if you're paying four mana for it, you're wanting you're not going to want to get one elf. Um, <laughs> and most elves are like three CMC or lower. So if you're paying five mana to get that back, it's going to feel really bad. Even if you get the one ones, um, I just think this card is really slow and there's a lot better things you could do with that five mana. Next card is Poison the Cup. One and two blacks for an instant. It says destroy target creature. If this spell was foretold, you get the scry two. Um, again, if you foretell this one, you're going to have to pay more because you have to exile it for two and then foretell it later for one and a black. Um, at least with this card, when you're foretelling it, you get some added benefit. Um, it's only scrying two, so it's not that significant of, of a benefit. Um, so the, basically, this is just this card is murder with foretell tacked on and sometimes you can scry to with it um, so what does that mean murder doesn't really see play in constructed this card definitely will not but premium removal in limited um sometimes you're even going to foretell this and you'll feel happy about it because you're just that late in the game that you're just scratching for any value and scrying too might just be enough to help you win a game next card is hailstorm valkyrie three and a black for a snow creature it's an angel wizard with a two, -two that's a two two with flying and trample so with this one, you can, it has an activated ability. You can pay two snow mana to give the Hailstorm Valkyrie plus two plus two until end of turn. And this one you can do as many times as you can per turn as long as you have snow mana to pay for it. Um, so what does that mean for this card? I think the fact that it's not once per turn gives it a chance that if, if and again, with an asterisk, if there is a snow deck that's going to utilize black cards. This has flying and trample, so it has evasion, it's a 2-2, and it has, the, it has the, the added ability that it can help protect itself. Because if they're trying to do any sort of direct damage to this, you're gonna, you can utilize any excess mana that you have sitting around to make it bigger, making it harder to destroy. Um, sometimes you just pay like 10 mana to give this thing, what would that be? 10 mana, that would be plus 10, plus 10. So it's just a 12-12 flyer with trample. You smash it and just end the game like that. Um, I think this card is also pretty decent and limited if you're able to get enough snow mana. I don't know how, we don't know like right now how frequently you can get a lot of snow mana to make that happen, but if you can, it's going to look really good and limited too. I might be overvaluing this card, but I, it's just a nice mana dump with evasion, um, and you can sometimes just end the game with it very quickly. Next card is Draugr's Helm, one in a black for an artifact equipment. It says when Draugr's Helm enters the battlefield, you may pay two in a black. So. Um, essentially you're paying a kicker cost for this if you kicker it for two and a black you get to create a 2-2 black zombie berserker creature token and then you attach this equipment to it and this equipment also says you get the creature gets plus two plus two and menace um, if you don't kicker it, it just comes into the battlefield as the draugr's helm that says you have to equip it for four <laughs> so you would effectively have to pay six mana to equip a creature with plus two plus two and menace so this card is so slow it is so slow it's n no way it's ever constructed i think it's even too slow for limited like i asked myself would i be willing to pay five mana for four four with menace and I thought probably not because, like I said, Menace is not one of the most powerful keywords that you can get in Magic, not even in Limited. Um, I think if it was like any other keyword, maybe not any other keyword, but most other keywords, this would be so good. Like if this said Flying, 5 mana 4-4 four, four Flyer, that'd be sweet. Um, Menace, I just don't think is that helpful. So I think this is Pack Filler. I think it's, it's one of the worst or more worse of these like equipments that you can kicker that we've seen so far. Next card is Blood Sky Berserker, one in a black for a human berserker creature. He's a 1-1. It also says whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put two plus one plus one counters on Blood Sky Berserker. It gains menace until the end of turn. So this card, we were looking at that like it was like a rat card or whatever that had the similar effect when you cast two, two spells in a turn, it gets some sort of bonus. See, this one, based on the punctuation, it says it gets the counters and it gets to keep the counters. It just loses menace at the end of the turn. So that makes this card a lot better. I think it's probably stu still too slow for a constructed. Um, it scales really nicely, but you have to play a lot of cards and it's going to take some investment to build this guy up. Um, but in limited, like you might be able to play this on turn two. If your follow up turn, you can play two cards and then the follow up turn after that. Um, it's going to be a 5-5 five, five, and then it's going to start like 
beaten in really really like aggressively so i think in limited if you can build around it it's going to perform fairly well but in constructed it's too slow even if it does scale pretty nicely next card we're on to the raiders this is varagoth blood sky sire he's two and a black for a legendary creature demon rogue two three body with death touch so that alone isn't bad we're paying three mana for two three with death touch now this guy has boast so we know the other boast effects haven't been very good but let's look at this one so when Vargoth attacks, you can pay one in a black. If you do, target player searches their library for a card, then shuffles their library and puts that card on top of it. So what do you want to do with this? Do you want to target yourself or do you want to target your opponent? So I think in the majority of circumstances, you want to target yourself. So what that means is when Vargoth attacks, you're paying two mana to, tu to tutor a specific card from in your deck onto the top. Hopefully you have a, a way to combo and draw that immediately so your opponent doesn't like mess with you by milling that or whatever but i think that's irrelevant i think one of the reasons that this card is good is because it uh, circumvents the issues that all these other boasting cards have where you need to attack with them to get their ability but you don't want to because they're on frail and weak bodies this card has death touch so it puts your opponent in a very um precarious position because they don't want to let you attack because then you can boast it and tutor for a strong card but they don't want to block because this has death touch so you might be able to attack with this thing over and over again and tutor a bunch of cards and in that scenario this card is going to be cool i think this one is probably one of the few boast cards that have constructed viable because it does put your opponent in such a difficult position do they block it and lose their creature um and even if they do you still can get at least one boast off or do they let it go and let it go and let you keep terrorizing them and getting value with the boast that this card and this card actually has a very strong boasting ability tutoring for a specific specific card is very good um so like i said this one's good this one's good and constructed and limited both next card is skim far avenger one in a black for an elf berserker creature three one body and it says whenever another non-token elf or berserker you control dies you draw a card and you lose one life um so i think this is more or less just an auto include in elf decks um i think a big issue that some elf decks tend to have is they, they get really really wide and then they just sit around and wait for their payoff cards to finally get there to, to give everything death touch or to get really big or give you some way to um to, to leverage a strong attack into your opponents this one can let you attack um this one will let you utilize your elves to attack one at a time or in small attacks because when you do your opponents just like the last card we looked at are going to be in a precarious situation do they block it so they don't take the damage um but if they do it's going to let you draw a card i mean i mean paying one life is fairly insignificant so this one is really good i think it's auto include in the elf decks that also utilize black because being able to just draw a card for essentially doing what you normally do playing a lot of stuff and attacking is a huge payoff next card is rise of the dread marn two and a black for an instant it says create x two two black zombie berserker creature tokens x is the number of non-token creatures that died this turn you can foretell this you pay two and you can pl play it at instant speed for one black later this card this card is an all-star like i seriously think this is probably one of the best cards that we've seen in this set so so far um the ideal scenario what you're going to want to do with this card is you don't even have to do this but if you can you foretell it for two and you leave one black mana open you have a reasonable size board maybe your reason your opponent has a reasonable size board it gets even better maybe everyone has a reasonable side board somebody board wipes so let's say uh 10 creatures get 10 non-token creatures get destroyed you pay one mana for this and you get 10 2 2 zombie berserker creature tokens um that is so powerful and it's just it's not just your creatures it takes into consideration all the creatures that died on that turn so i think this card is very powerful i think this card is extremely good in commander specifically because i think that can happen so frequently where there's just a huge board state somebody destroys the board maybe it's the if in an ideal world it's the turn right before yours you play this you get uh 20 20 worth of zombie tokens and then you just crush somebody the following turn because they're going to have no defenders to block you because the board just got wiped anyway this is a staple this is a stable card and a lot of black decks going forward it's super good do not underestimate this card next card is blood on the snow four and two black for a snow sorcery you have to choose one destroy all creatures 
or destroy all Planeswalkers. After you pick one, you get to return a creature or Planeswalker card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. X is the amount of snow mana that you spent to cast this spell. I think this card is quite bad. 6 mana destroy all creatures or 6 mana destroy all planeswalkers is horrendous. You can do the same thing at way less mana cost. Um, not, not not in just black, but in re realistically a lot of colors, but specifically in black. Black has lots of very powerful board wipes that are that are costed way more efficiently than this. Um, even if you spent 4 or 6 snow mana to cast this card, even if you got back a 6 CMC card, I still don't think it would be that good. It wouldn't be that big of a tempo swing. Because um, there's other cards that do also this same effect that are statted more efficient, or uh, C their CMC is more efficient than this one. So, unfortunately, this is a pack filler rare for black. Next card is Draugr Necromancer, 3 and a black for a zombie cleric, no creature, 4-4 four, four body. It says if a non-token creature and opponent controls would die, exile that card with a nice counter on it instead. You may cast spells from among cards in exile your opponent's own with ice counters on them. And you can spend mana from snow sources as though it were mana of any color to cast a spell. So first off, I just want to apologize because this card is literal word vomit. Like, it, somebody just, in R&D, in just regurgitated so many words on this card. It's like, it is a mouthful to say. Essentially, what this card is saying is if the Draugr Necromancer is on the board and your opponent loses a creature for whatever reason, it goes to exile instead with a counter, with this special, like, ice counter on it, which I've only seen on this card. Um, so it really only synergizes with itself. But what you can do then is if they get something in exile with the ice counter and you still have this necromancer on board, you can pay some of your snow mana to pay for the card that got exiled and you can play it yourself. That's, there's a lot going on with this card and I think it's really, really slow. I think it's too slow for constructed. Um, I think if you can just stick this thing on the board in limited and it sticks around for a while, see some trades go through, you might be able to play a couple of cards um, that your opponent lost if you can do that maybe you get some tempo it's just a four mana four four again which i think is the cutoff for stats alone so even just for stats i think this is playable and limited but this card's way too slow way too slow and constructed and it had it like it has to stay on the board in, able, in order to use its effect it doesn't work with board wipes like there's a lot of things that are holding this one back next card is crippling fear two and two black for a sorcery choose a creature type Creatures that aren't of the chosen type get minus three, minus three until end of turn. This is a very good card. It's um, it's four mana pseudo board wipe. Minus three, minus three. At, at least that turn four is going to pretty much destroy everything that's on the board. Um, you could play it in a tribal deck as well. You could name your own creature type, and it becomes a pseudo one-sided board wipe. Um, so this card's this card's quite good. It resembles a lot of other board wipes that we have already that do see play. Um, so I think this one will also see some amount of play. So, so we have we are now on to Turgrid, God of Fright, and let me tell you, this card is indeed frightening. So this is the first black card that we are seeing that is an MDFC, meaning it has two faces, and you can play either side. This is a legendary creature god on a four or five body, so it's a five mana four or five with menace. It also says whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent. You may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. I don't even really feel like I need to read Turgrid's Lantern, but we will, um, because because unfortunately the backside is also ridiculously good. So Turgrid's Lantern is three and a black for a legendary artifact that says tap Turgrid's Lantern. Target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. You can then pay three and a black to untap Turgrid's Lantern. So what does that mean? If you are able to give yourself infinite mana, which is easier said which is easier said than done, but can be done relatively consistently in some formats, this just wins you the game by itself. It doesn't need to combo with anything, it just needs you to have infinite mana somehow. On the target side of this card, you play it out on the board, and if you can get somebody to discard any card from your hand, it just goes onto your side of the battlefield. Well anything that's a permanent at least. That's insane. This especially if it is a universal effect where you are making all of your opponents discard a card you're gonna get if they're all creatures you know for example in a perfect world you're gonna get three creatures on your board um if you utilize any sort of spell spell that makes your opponent sacrifice creatures you're gonna get those creatures on your side of the board um this card this card is really nuts um that the front side creature side is very very powerful 
and the backside lantern side is also very very powerful um powerful because turret side creates massive tempo swings and board states and the lantern side creates an inevitability scenario where you're just going to eventually win the game if you have a lot of mana so this card's really good this is going to see play in so many decks um i'm thinking it's going to see a lot of play in commander but i think it's a good card as your commander it's also a good card in the 99 too as a combo piece um i don't know how good it's going to be in like 1v1 formats but in multiplayer formats this card is so disgusting and you're going to hate to play against this card i just know it so next card is egon god of death um, another MDFC card that we're going to be seeing. So the front side is Legendary Creature God. He's a 6-6. He costs 2 and a black. He has Death Touch. It also says at the beginning of your upkeep, exile 2 cards from your graveyard. If you can't, you sacrifice Egon and you draw a card. So, obviously this guy's a 3-mana 6-6. It's probably going to have some, going to need to have some amount of drawback in order for it to be able to play it at that CMC and also at that stat, um, stat total. However, um... In a worst case scenario, if you play if you play him as a two mana or I'm sorry a two and a black and as a six six, then you can't exile to keep him on board. You still get to draw a card. So worst case scenario, it's a three mana draw a card. That's not horrible anyway. So let's look at the throne of death. It's one black for legendary artifact. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, you mill a card. If you can pay two and a black, you tap um, throne of death, and then you can exile a creature card from your graveyard, draw a card. So very similar as the front side of this <laughs> the front side of egon where you pay three mana you get to draw the card um so which side of this card do you play more consistently i think i think that is really the thing that's as hard i think in i think where this card shines the most you play it for one mana as the throne of death you let it mill a couple of cards mm, let's say like let's say four turns go by ideally um and then you play the egon side and then you can keep them on board as a 6-6 six, six death touch for several turns because you're ha you're going to have the resources in the graveyard to exile to keep him around. So I think this card is really pretty good. I think this card gets worse in, con in, um, in limited, but I can see this being played in, in quite a few constructed decks because 3 mana 6-6 six, six is nothing to scoff at. And there are pretty easy ways to fill your graveyard and keep this guy on board and just threatening your opponents all the time. Next card we are looking at is the Dream Devourer, one in a black for a Demon Cleric creature. It's a 0-3. It says each non-land card in your hand without Fortel has Fortel. Its Fortel cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by 2. Um, so this card is interesting because I it there's some cards that I think it was going to synergize with well, and I think there's other cards with, which it doesn't synergize with, like, at all. Um, especially if the card has no generic mana cost in it, because you don't get the added benefit of reducing its cost by two, because the reduced cost only affects generic mana. Um, this card additionally says whenever you foretell a card, Dream Devourer, Dream Devourer will get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the foretell mechanic. I, I don't think it's particularly good. I think it's kind of gimmicky, and I don't think it was really designed to be a powerful mechanic. So for that reason, I find this card to be pack filler. Um, I think a lot of the times you're you're not want to you're not going to want to jump through the hoops of just foretelling things for the sake of foretelling things. You would want to foretell it to have some sort of strong benefit to do so. And a lot of the foretell cards we've looked at are better just if you just pay for their cost up front you just you just play it without jumping through the foretell hoop um so because i don't think foretell is very good i don't think dream devourer is very very good and i don't think giving it plus two plus zero until end of turn is much of a payoff so sorry dream devourer pack filler for you next card is eradicator valkyrie two and two black for angel berserker creature it's a four three with flying lifelink and hexproof from planeswalkers so how much does Hexproof from Planeswalkers matter? Probably not much at all, but a 4-3 with Flying and Lifelink isn't bad. Um, you can boast this one. If you boast it, you pay one and a black. Sacrifice a creature. If you do, your opponent has to sacrifice a creature or a Planeswalker. Um, I think this card could see some amount of play because it's a 4-mana four 4-3 four with Flying and Lifelink. Um, that's not bad. It has Evasion, so you can attack relatively safely because it has Flying and you can do the boast. 
if you're in an aristocrat sacrifice type deck you're okay with sac like sacking off your one one and your opponent hopefully has to sacrifice something much bigger giving you a huge tempo swing um so it, it does slot into aristocrat style deck i do think it's a little bit expensive and i don't necessarily think it's always the payoff that you're looking for in those decks but i think you can make it work and i think if it, if it starts to go off it starts to gain you a lot of tempo advantage it makes it hard for your opponent to catch up next card haunting voyage four mana and two black so six cmc total it's for a sorcery you're going to choose a creature type return up to two creature cards of that type sorry this one I, I don't know these videos are going on too long and um, all the words are running together at this point <laughs> choose a creature type okay so you have to pick a creature type as soon as you cast this once you once you do you return up to two creature cards of that chosen type from your graveyard to the battlefield okay if this spell was foretold return all creature cards of that type from your graveyard to the battlefield instead okay all right so the foretell cost for this is very significant you have to pay the two to exile it and then you have to pay five generic and two black later so in total you're paying nine mana um if you pay nine mana you get all the creature cards from your graveyard that share a creature type out onto the battlefield how good is that i don't know for nine mana i think your card more or less has to just say win the game or really set you up to win the game um i'm just trying to think of what tribe you would want to play this in um and i'm really having a hard time thinking one because black doesn't have a ton of tribes other than like zombies and elves and there's probably some other significant ones that i'm forgetting i think this card is just too slow and too expensive especially when there's cards like command the dread horde that you can play at a way lower mana cost like lower mana cost which allows you to play it earlier into the game and have a more significant swing on the board um so unfortunately hmm why did I think this was constructed playable? Apparently when I read this the first time I thought it was very very good. I guess it no, even if you paid even if you pay 6 for it just to get back two creatures, I don't think that's very good. Um ignore what I said. I don't think this is constructed playable. Um I think it's probably okay and limited, however. So let's just pretend that doesn't say constructed. Let's pretend this is limited. Um paying 6 to get two creatures back if they're reasonable size is going to be pretty good and limited. Um hmm i don't know i must have been smoking something when i said constructed playable because i really think this card is just way too slow anyway moving on last card that we're looking at is burning rune demon four and two black for a demon berserker creature it's a six six with flying it says when burning rune demon enters the battlefield you may search your library for two cards not named burning rune demon that have different names so you have to search your deck for two two different cards that are not this card if you do that, you have to reveal the cards, and opponent, your opponent gets to pick one of them. Put the one that your opponent picks into your graveyard, into your graveyard, then you shuffle your deck. Um, so, oh, sorry, the one that they choose, I guess it doesn't really matter. You basically ask your opponent, which one do you want to go to the graveyard? Which one do you want to go to your hand? So you get to put. So your ideally, you're going to pick like your two best cards that you have, and make your opponent have a really tough time picking between the two. Um, inevitably they're going to give you a very strong card either way so this card is a six mana six six with flying okay for limited probably not good enough for destructive but it tutors you for i mean you can you can realistically set this up either way um because you're going to build your deck around this in a way that's like either card is going to be good in the situation so it's a six mana six six draw a specific card and it has flying that's good this is a very good i think this is a constructed playable card um it's a little bit slow because it's six mana so you wouldn't really you would never pay six mana for a tutor but you get a six six with flying on top of it so i think in conjunction those two things work together very powerful and it helps you set up for any following plays um assuming that that the game's going to go any longer after you play the big six six with flying so i believe that's the last card that we're looking at for black yes um like some of the other colors that we've looked at so far i do recognize that there's one specific card in black that you're probably saying why didn't i review that um that's because it's an mdfc card and it shares other colors with it it's like a multicolor card on one of the sides so i'm going to be reviewing that during the multicolor episode um 
I think I'm starting to go ahead and trying to make these like slideshows ahead of time. And the multicolor one, there's a lot of multicolor cards and a lot of them are very good. So when I do make that episode, it might have to be broken up into two different parts or else it's going to be like an hour and a half to two hours long. Um, that's going to be a lot for me to sit through and record and probably a lot to watch too, I would think. So we have to do blue. Blue is going to be next and after that I'm going to be doing multicolored. Um, and then I think the only thing that will have to be covered at that point is going to be the lands. Um, which probably won't be a significant video. And if I've missed any other cards for whatever reason, I'll probably throw them in with that video too. Um, so look forward to about three more videos for the Kaldheim review. Um, and then the set's going to be out. And how exciting is that? Um, I am going to be getting booster box, like I said in the last last episode. Um, I would be happy to make a video, do a box opening that of that if anyone is interested in seeing that. So if you do want to see a box opening for Kaldheim, please let me know. Um, let me know in the comments or you can send me a message, whatever, and I'd be happy to make a video for that. I might just make a video for it regardless, just to see how it, um, see how it goes, see how it's received. So anyway, I want to thank everyone for sticking to the end and watching this video. Um, I'll see you again in, uh, tomorrow or in a, in a day or two for the blue review. Thanks again. Have a good day.